Video walk on Coleman. First things up, you're pre-wired for a backup camera. You don't actually have the backup camera. Um, it's just pre-wired for it. If you want us to, we can install the camera. Um, it comes with a camera and then the screen goes in your truck. Um, it does run power off of those marker lights, so your running lights on your tow vehicle need to be on for that camera to turn on. Got city water connection. So if, you're, uh, if, you, if your site provides water and you got your hose, that's what you're going to hook it up to. Um, you won't have to run your pump or anything like that. Fold-out grill platform, and so this folds out like that. And you set your grill down there on that. Then you get your propane hookup right there for it. Cable inlet. If your campground provides a uh, cable, you can hook cable through there. Bumper caps come off. That's the perfect spot to store your sewer hose. Short cord. This is your short cord. It comes with it. 50 amp. Uh, 50 amp short cord. It's about 25, 30 feet long. Dump station, so the gray one's your gray handle, the gray tank, the black one's your black tank, your gray tank is your uh, shower and sink water, your black tank is your toilet water. Um, I always make sure the valves are completely closed before I take the cap off. And then I always recommend dumping your black tank first. Once that's all dumped out, dump your gray tank. That gray water will flush out that hose so you don't have to carry around a stinky black, black hose. Seals for your slide. Slides. Every once in a while, just visually inspect them, make sure they're not dry or cracked or anything like that. We do provide a service called a slide out maintenance, and then we all we do is we clean these seals, put some seal conditioner on it, and then we spray the rails with a, a, a dry lube. Both of those products you can buy here if you choose to do it yourself, and that's something I recommend doing um, at least once a year, if not more. Stabilize the jacks on this side of these jacks. You have a spot right there. Put in a crank for a manual backup. Plenty of storage. Good information here. Got your VIN, um, gross vehicle weight rating, um, model number. Right there, tire pressure, 65 PSI, and then tire size in case you want to um, replace your tires when they start to get worn. Propane cover, so you can open that up. Dual 20 pound cylinders, they are filled. So just like your barbecue at a home, you left left to turn on, right to turn off. Um, all the way open or all the way closed, don't have them halfway open thinking you're gonna save some propane. Right there you got your automatic changeover regulator, so wherever this is pointing to, so it's pointing to this tank, it's going to pull from this tank first. Once this one would be depleted and that one were to be on, it'll automatically switch to pulling from this tank. However, that won't rotate indicating as. You can rotate this to choose what tank. It won't move when it automatically switches, so you have to keep that in the back of your head. Um, you could be halfway through this, ha halfway through this tank and still think you're pulling from that one. Group 24. Uh, RV marine grade battery in the winter I definitely recommend taking it out keeping it somewhere warm um, if it's gonna be a long time between trips a couple weeks I recommend disconnecting your negative lead that's a black one that's gonna keep any anything from using the voltage on your battery using amperage sorry power tongue jack so up and down beats cranking every day of the week with a little light which helps hook up at night this is a spot for a crank for manual backup On. Oh, gotta line these tabs up. There. There we go. Move it along. There's other access to that storage. You're pre wired for solar. So you'd have to buy the solar kit, which comes with all the cables and everything you need necessary. And all that does is trickle charge your batteries. So if you're going dry camping somewhere, you can at least keep a charge to your battery. Stabilizer jacks. They extend. It'll do one and then the other. So this one will go down and then the other one will... A 
So if one hits the ground and it's a little uneven, that one will stop and the other one will keep going. That way it doesn't pick your camper up sideways. These are not meant to lift your camper up. If you try to, there's a, a self-resetting breaker that'll trip and you have to wait a few seconds um, for it to reset because you'll amp out the motor. So if you want your trailer to be level, you front to back with your tongue jack, get a level of that. You can even put those peel and stick levels on. And then side to side, as you're backing in, you back, black, back your tires onto some blocks to get a level side to side. Outdoor power is GFCI protected. All your um, GFCI outlets are in the same circuit, so if one would have tripped, they're all going to trip. Water heater, very simple, easy to use. When you're ready to use it, put this plug in, in here, get it tightened by hand. Um, and then I use a 15 16 that's the socket size socket, with a little extension and a ratcheting wrench. Um, that's that's the easiest way to do it. They have a tool, but it's more like a wrench, and you have to use it here, and you end up scraping your knuckles on that. Um, so that, you put that in there. As soon as you hook up water, this will fill up, be ready to go, and you'll be able to turn it on. Um, I always recommend draining it after every trip. Um, water that sits in there will start to get stagnant after a couple weeks, um, even a couple days, really. So before you pull that plug out, you pull your pressure relief up like that. Water will squirt out, everything is okay to get wet. Um, once it stops coming out, you can snap it closed, then you can take your plug out. If you neglect to do that, and if you've been running your water heater for a lot, there's a lot of pressure in there, and if you try to take that cap off, you're going to get a hot bath, and you, that might end up getting shot across the campground, and, you, and you'll lose it. Other than that, keep it clean in the burn chamber, and then you around in your exhaust. Spider webs, debris, stuff like that builds up in there. You want to keep it clean. If it gets real bad, you'll get like soot all over the door, here, here. If it gets real bad, it'll get on the on the side of the camper. And if it gets really, really bad, if the if it flames up and the flame that hits this, that's a thermal fuse, and your water heater won't work anymore until that part gets replaced. So you can avoid all that by keeping it clean. Fresh fill. Stick your hose in there, don't jam it in there, just rest it in there. And you can turn your hose on, that'll fill the onboard tank. Right there is an overflow, um, so if you start filling it, water will come out of there. It'll escape around the hose too. That's why I don't recommend jamming your hose in there, because if this gets pinched off or is dirty for any reason and water can't escape, now you're pressurizing your fresh tank and you don't want to do that. So to drain it, it is, let's see if we, right there, little red drain, drain that. Exhaust for your furnace, just keep it clean, clear any debris out of it when you see it. They make screens for these, they don't recommend you run them with the screen on, but as far as like um, storage, it's going to keep insects from building up nests or um, anything like that in there. Intake for your fridge, your exhaust is on the roof, that's just for airflow. Um, keep those clean, keep those little grates clean there. You can even pop this whole panel off and clean it if you'd like to. Right over there. You have your exterior vent for your range hood. So you a little short right here, but you just pop this tab out. Um, that'll allow that, that whatever you're venting out to actually escape. If not, your fan vent's not really doing anything. Um, so snap it closed before you travel, and I always recommend overnight so you don't get any insects in there. Outdoor shower. You do have hot and cold out here. So let's see if we can't. You'll get a key that looks like, with your set of keys, looks like this one right there. 751 key. Pop it open. Hot, cold, and you can take that shower head out. It's pretty long. If you got pets or any kids you want to spray down, you can spray them down that way. Black tank flush, you can hook a hose up through here. Um, and then as you're dumping your black tank, and only do it when you're dumping, otherwise you're just going to fill your black tank up with water. Um, there's a little nozzle in there that'll spray out the tank, help it keep it fresh. So if you have the ability to, when you are dumping your tanks, drag a hose over here, hook it up to there, turn it on, it'll help flush out your tank. Outdoor kitchen. Very pretty, pretty simple. You got 
fridge. It's only going to work when you're plugged in. You have a light up there. Then another GFCI outlet. Sink that drains into that same gray tank. And you got storage drawers on, on both sides. Close it like that. I always recommend standing a little bit to the side when doing these. Because the, the struts have a lot of power behind them, and I've been bopped in the chin a couple times. Another switch for the rear jacks. Alright, we'll head on into the inside now. We'll start with our bedroom, we'll start simple and work our way to the front. Out dual outlet and USB ports on either side of the bed. Plenty of storage in here for his and hers, or if she like if she's nice, she may she'll have let you have half of one of them. The drawers on either side. Your lights in here just turn on and off at the fixture. Spot to mount a TV. So power, coax. Just you see here the wall flexes here. You have to feel for a backer, feel where it's solid. Keep in mind how long of a screw you're using. I don't recommend using the screws that come with a TV mount because usually they're too long. And if you if you try to mount a TV and you use too long of a screw and it pokes to the outside, that's a non warrantable item. A spot for a TV in here so you can mount it on the wall again, feel for, for solid, or you can just rest it in here. You can plug this into your TV. This is because your radio is a DVD player. You have a light switch there for some accent LEDs there. Power for any TV there. And then you have you hook your TV up through there. So this one right here, see if you can't focus. This one is your booster for your antenna. So if you're using your antenna, make sure that's on. This one is if you opt to get the uh, optional uh, Wi-Fi extender installed. This turns on and off the Wi-Fi extender. Radio, very simple. On or off. So, turn the volume down. Volume, zone. So, zone one's inside. If you turn zone one off, it's just going to be outside, and then vice versa. And that's good for if you got late at night and you don't want to wake up the neighbors, you can still listen to some music. Um, you have presets right here. So, one through six. Um, push and hold to save a preset, just like your car radio. And you have Play, pause, stop, scan through the channels, Bluetooth, and this goes through the modes. And you have auxiliary, headphones, and then USB. And then power. Very simple. If you wanted to use it as a DVD player, you'd pop your DVD in there. If you had a TV in there. You'd, since this is an HDMI, you'd have your TV to, uh, to the AV. It usually says AV or composite. And then that's what you would run. And then it will run movie audio through the speakers if you have it set up right right below that breaker box and your fuses so all your breakers for your 120 volt appliances all your fuses for your 12 volt so they're just 15 amp fuses so I recommend just keeping this couple spare 15 amp fuses on you to the left of that RV carbon monoxide and propane gas alarm so that's hardwired to the 12 volt system there's no batteries you have to worry about changing However, they will give like low voltage chirps if your battery up on the front, the one outside I was showing you, starts dying if you're not plugged in because it's not having enough voltage to operate. That's one of those things. So that and your radio always use power. Even if you have all your lights off and it unplugged, it uses power like radio memory and then that always has, is always powered. Uh, you got smoke alarm. That's your other safety appliance. Nine volt battery. So if you get start getting a low voltage chirp, it's, it's time to change the battery. So here's your panel for everything. You can measure battery, fresh, black, your grays. Um, you only have one gray, um, I believe. We'll have to we'll double check on the way out. See if we have another sewer connection for a second gray tank. If not, then you only have. Let's see if we can't get it to focus. And we only have one uh, gray tank. Water heater on gas. So this is a gas only water heater, and that's fine. They recover very quickly on gas. Water pump, so if you are pulling from your onboard tank, you use your water pump. Um, lights exterior, that'll be awning lights right there. 
interior lights just turns off your main row of lights here. All the other lights, like the ones on your slide, those accent lightings in the bedroom have to be turned off at the fixtures. Then you have your slide rooms. So the one, first one right here is your main slide. Your second one is your rear slide. And then this other big switch right here is awning. So we'll show you that. The awning does not automatically stop when it comes out. You have to visually look and see. When you start seeing the bare tube, you're good. Sometimes when they're rolled up for a while, there's a flap and that'll stay up there because it's kind of conformed to the shape of the tube. The more you use it, the more relaxed it'll get. You are adjustable. You can even see right here. Pull down to adjust pitch. So you just pull this down like that. So if it's raining, you can have water pitch off to one end. If it starts storming, high winds, roll your awning up. Um, um, the wind will take this away. Um, if you And the nice thing about these is you can leave them adjusted and then still roll them in. Um, if you roll them in wet... As soon as it gets dry out, roll it back in, um, roll it back out, sorry, rather, because you don't want this fabric to retain water. Um, it'll get streaky and mildewy. So we'll roll it back in. You can see that's still slightly adjusted, and it works just fine coming in. See how it strains itself out? Very simple over there. Moving along. So you can get your blue bag right there is gonna have all your manuals in it. So the, like your everything that was installed in here has a manual for it. And the GFCI outlet. Microwave only works when you're plugged in. Range vent, you got a light here and then a fan. That's that fan I was telling you about. If you are running that fan, you need that flap open on the outside. Otherwise it's not doing you any good. Cook top, folding glass top, that'll act as a backsplash. Turn. Click to light. So you just turn it to a little flame right there. You twist to light it. Um, the gas is off, and then we're just burning all the gas off in the lines. There we go. You have a little light here that turns a little decorative light on that also turns the oven light on. To light your oven, it's a little bit different. Turn it to the flame. You push and hold. So this actually comes in. You can see the light dim a little bit. Then as you're pushing and holding, you turn this sparker because there's a pilot in there. So we can't turn the sparker so you can see it. There's a pilot you're trying to light. So once you get that pilot lit, you can turn it to whatever temperature you're cooking at. And once it's reached that temperature, it'll turn off and it's like the cycle the burner on and off. Um, if you plan on cooking again in a few hours, you can turn it to the flame. That shuts the burner off, but leaves your pilot on. That way you don't have to relight the pilot. I recommend turning it off before you go to bed. You don't want a lit pilot overnight. Very simple. Fridge, super simple. You have one button. On or off. Um, so its only mode is automatic. So if it were to lose power, if you were to, someone were to trip over your plug or the campground were to lose power, um, this will automatically switch to running off of propane if you were to have your propane on. Very simple. These do not work like your fridges at home. They actually take about anywhere from 9 to 12 hours to get to the operating temperature. So keep that in mind. Then you just push and hold to turn that off. Plenty of storage over here. Thermostat, very simple to use. Tap the power button. First thing it'll ask is your fan mode, so auto high or low. I recommend auto. That's going to allow it to cycle on and off whatever temperature you have it set at. AC goes as low as 55. Your furnace goes as high as 90. Um, very simple. Um, yeah, so if you have your Ace furnace set to 90 and it was on auto, it'll get to 90 in here, and then your furnace will shut off, and then as it starts to uh, cool, cool, cool down in here, it'll, it'll kick back on and try to get back to 90 again. My only other tip with these things is are if you ex it can be a little touchy if you accidentally hit up and down at the same time. It switches to Celsius. Don't freak out. Just hit up and down again.
to get it back to Fahrenheit. Just tap it through again, it turns it off. Little light fixture up here, turn on here. A little hallway, a little storage in your hallway, another GFCI outlet down there. We'll snake to the bedroom and then make our way back. More light fixtures in the bedroom. You turn them on at the fixture. Outlet right there, non-GFCI outlet, because you see it's not labeled GFCI. Got your bunk here. This folds up. You can retain it there. That's for if you wanted to seat, sit down here and use that as a couch to watch uh, TV. I do believe this is equipped to have a TV in here yet, so you got a coax output and power, so if you want to have a small TV in here, you can. USB outlet, dual USB outlet over there. Um, another light there. And then light above this bunk, and then you got a light back there as well as two more USB outlets. There's a cushion underneath that bed, so you could slide it out, rest it on the floor, so this room could sleep four people, or if someone wants to double stack cushions, because it'll be a little bit more comfortable that way, if they can get to that cushion first, that's all them. Emergency exit. So, you push that out. You can rest it there. It has a normal window. Or it can close. You can lock it there. So, if it's an emergency, you would push it out like that. Push it all the way out. Grab the screen. Rip it off. Ladder. So, you lift it up. Pull it out. Use it as a ladder. You got some storage back there. Your door for in here, unsnap it. Doesn't lock close or anything, it just rest closed. Make sure before you travel, you lock you lock this. You let it retain or else when you're making turns, you'll smash into here and you can risk denting the wall. And also make sure you put your ladder back in a storage position before you close your slide out. We'll come on in here through the bathroom. You do have access to the bathroom from the outside. So a toilet's very easy as long as you're pushing this pedal here. It's going to keep flushing. You have a vent, fan vent over there. You can crank it up through here and turn it on from that switch right there. Resettable GFCI. So if any of your GFCI labeled outlets were to trip, this is where you reset it at. Sink, very self-explanatory. Shower, very easy. If you want to set it to shower, you just pull up on this tab right here. And that diverts water to your shower. Very easy, very simple. And a few more things. This plat this turns into a bed. You just undo that table, pop up the legs. The table rests on those shelves right here. And then you just rearrange your cushions to make a platform to sleep on. And then this as well turns into the bed, a bed. These on Velcro, right down there. You pop these out. Um, but it's a jackknife, so you lift up on the bottom and pull it out just like that. And that also gives you some plenty of storage space underneath it. And then some of them do, yep, this one folds down. You got removable cup holders. So if you need to clean them, you can take them out. Alright, that put pretty much it. That pretty much concludes your tour. Um do one last thing. We just noticed we have a light switch right there. It turns on LED lights underneath there. Alright. That pretty much concludes the tour of your Coleman.